What is up guys, Rick is here with a new video and today, well, not too much going on in Idle Heroes. I mean, we have the end of the mid-autumn celebration, definitely make sure you check in here, get your uh, remaining loot because there was some good stuff in here. We got like 10 cores. The skin selection chest was just a regular one. Actually, I think it's kind of weird they didn't change those around because that's definitely more value, but I'm not bothered. This was some actually huge stuff in there. Um, so make sure you get that. Beyond that, like not a really lot of events. I mean, we got the new hero, Gaggy, which probably my heroes, uh, my videos demonetized now, thanks to that. <laughs> oh, just kidding. It doesn't work that quickly. But other than that, not really anything going on here. Um, so next week or the week after, we should get in the other Soul Awakening Gala, though. If you're not too familiar with that, Soul Awakening Gala basically means uh, we can do Soul Awakenings and, well, there is a leaderboard and if you are at the higher positions on this leaderboard, you actually get an item, a core, uh, that lets you summon a predetermined grade of a hero, like you can get a core, for example, that summons an A- minus hero or a buff, uh, which is kind of huge. And, well, as we've never really gone for that on this account, well, we went and got like an A- minus core, but, I mean, like, it's a huge account, we got a lot of resources, so, well, I think we are going to go for an S core. And I announced that a little bit during streams and stuff, uh, but I actually prepared for that now. Like, I, I got a decent amount of contract starry and starry here. I would like to convert more of that, those starry gems here to contract starry gems. Well, other way around. Those are the starry gems. Those are the contract starry gems. Um, I would like to convert more here, but there is kind of a problem at the moment. Uh, the auction house has gotten really expensive. Like... It's insane. I don't know. I made a little graphic for that. Let's let's check that out. So basically what you can see here are the auction house prices from the 19th of the, uh, September now to the 8th of October. And uh, the increase or the difference from the new to the old prices. So for example, on the first one on the C- minus here, we got I went from 70 to 84, which is like a 20% increase. Uh, if you check out the auction house right now, you might see that there are some prices a little bit lower than mine. Um, usually, if there is like one that is cheaper than the, the, the larger amount of heroes that is listed for price, uh, I, I take that out because like there is always one guy that makes it cheaper and it would be pretty bad, for example, if I listed, if I said that, okay, there's one C minus now for 38 starry gems. Um, and I listed it as 38 now, while the majority is listed at 80 or something. So that would, uh, would be kind of bad. So uh, currently 20% increase in price on the C- series, which is kind of expected given that Soul Gathering statue is coming around. So uh, yeah, kind of bad. Um, and C- was definitely one of the kinds of copies uh, that we were looking at when we wanted to go for contract starry gems, because that was usually pretty good value. Um, the other copies I usually bought were the B tiers, retiring for 600 contract starry gems, uh, now 10% more expensive than the last time. And even before that, you have to see, we had a similar jump before that. I uh, When I started preparing, I actually bought the B tier copies at around 400. So... Uh, that is actually an insane difference now going up to 500, 25% um, increase from that. And well, that is value that we lose, obviously, because in the best case, we would convert all of our starry gems to contract starry gems so that we can more do more summons. There is some weird stuff going on, obviously, on the A-, uh, which is quite, kind of normal because there aren't like hundreds of copies listed there. So if we we're looking at A+, Maybe there are five, six, seven, eight copies in there, and one of them is usually like the cheapest. So um, that is not really representative. Same as like there is no single SS hero at the moment in the market. So yeah, can't compare anything like that. Um, and SSS is usually rather random. If there's like an Ignis or something, it's usually cheaper than if the only, whether the only or if the only hero is like a DTV. Um, so, yeah. And we usually don't tend to buy those for Contract Starry anyway. If we go for Contract Starry, it's usually around uh, C- to B really most of the time, not even B+. So, uh, that is a bit of a problem in preparing for this event. Um, and yeah, so I I'm, I'm actually made another graphic. We saw this graphic before for the charging progress. I uh, refreshed that a little bit and you can actually see the conversion ratio here. Um, that is, that is with the current prices right now. And you can see the best thing that we can actually buy at the moment are C-tier copies because 
1.3 uh, contract starry gems per starry gem spent basically which is decent um the usual value when we bought b tiers for 400 was like 1.5 so still not very good in that sense and yeah um actually you can see you go below one even here because well it's none under retiring value there so kind of bad um also put the charging progress in here if you if you want to have a fresh uh, copy of that graphic you can just take a screenshot now um includes all the info and soul gathering that you need as well on the other end i have to say well we are in a pretty good position in terms of copies um i'm planning to go for an s -co uh, core um not sure if i can go for ss or sss probably not and i probably don't even want to go for sss not because i don't have these starry gems i could very much have them but the thing is it gets so competitive like take a look at the, what happened last time with soul and all the other guys uh they just pushed ever higher and higher and higher and in the end they had uh, thousands of points difference to the s tier pe ss people and the s tier people which got pretty good value last time um for their money and uh well at sss it was just not worth it at all um and still, even at SSS, you can get pretty bad value, actually. People always think those are those huge uh, heroes, but if we actually check our soul perfection, um, where are the stat tier ranges? There they are. We can check out the stat ranges for the higher end copies. You can actually see SSS starts at 9,300. So it's not like you always get those 9,900 copies or 9,890 or something. Uh, it can actually happen that you get like straight up 9,300 uh, on all of your stats or even something below 9,000. Uh, if you have like a high roll on, let's say, HP. If you get like at HP at 9,900, you can very well get... Um, SS attack at 8700 or something which uh, arguably isn't that nice so um not really that good and on the other side is also that no one really wants to pay 200,000 for uh, a hero in the auction house so like summoning an SS S instantly loses value for you uh, which is also why I really don't want to go for that S tier is really the sweet spot where you still find people that want to go for it and want to have such a copy and maybe not want to go for those super high super expensive copies because like if you sell an s tier copy at 50k you are rather fine if you uh, try to sell an sss at 200,000, well then the person that is considering to buy it well will probably start thinking about it and say like hey well i can buy like four s tier heroes for that price and that makes it kind of unappealing for a lot of people uh, and already at s tier you get like all of the bonus stats you have four bonus stats there already you can get decent stats not like this one this is actually horrible uh yeah I'm not going to talk about that but like you can get all of the bonus stats you will get the new s tier modifiers as well so like s is really what i'm looking at not really sss um we are stocked up on copies though like if we check that out like even this are like 1247 copies um and like if we check that out there are like i think nearly well there are a lot of copies in here that can't be really uh summoned so you what you have to keep in mind is you need to be able um to make those copies 10 star are there even can we make all of those guys 10 star can you summon a bleaker <laughs> let's check that out for a second do we have one i already stocked up for soul gathering statue here so that is also something that we did oh yeah we can strange i think i've never seen an awakened bleaker in there i think you can actually do that with all of those zeros that are in the five star shards i think that those are only copies that can really be uh, awakened if i didn't see anybody that wasn't there I mean, like, sequence, certainly. Yeah, like, all of those guys can be awakened. So, um, I mean, like, those are 1,247 copies already. Then we have all of those shards, and then we can scroll down. There's a lot more. So we are pretty much set on copies. Not all of them are that desirable. Usually you want to go for, like, stuff uh, like Jara, where we actually get the Transcendence Hero um, and not only have a base hero. Last time, actually, we summoned um, a base uh, Nakia, and, well, we got an A- minus there. So that, that wasn't too nice. Um, on top of that, I mean, we have some more stuff. I saved 133 cores. That will give us a good amount of uh, copies as well. Um, we have some more stuff as well in the summoning circle. Up there are another 200 copies. Um, 
basic summoning will probably not help us, but we have 100,000 switches here as well uh, to let five stars that are not summonable to switch them over to heroes that are summonable. So this will give us a lot of uh, summons as well. And then I think in terms of copies, we're pretty much set to go to like 20k points, probably easily uh, if we wanted to, but we will have to check it out. I think last time was around 15k that you could get in an S tier 4. Um, the other perspective of that is that it takes a long time. It will really take a long time to do all of those summons. And um, that's why I'm planning to take a week off, just take a week off um, and do a bunch of live streams with you guys. Just do like two hours, maybe a day or one and a half hours. Let's see. I'm not quite sure. I don't really want to go for like eight hour live streams or something, but maybe like a two hour live stream every single day. And then we're just going to do summons all the time. Uh, have some fun, talk a little bit in chat, and have a good time in general. And I think, um, given that we will likely see Gala next week or the week after, I will talk to the age about that because, well, I have to take, if I have to take uh, some days off for that, I have to take a bit of a vacation, um, then I should probably know in advance. I'm pretty sure they will tell me about it. At least I hope so. <laughs> uh, and then we can have a good time summoning a bit, having some fun in chat. Will be cool. Will be cool. So, and um, the last question, the last thing, and probably the thing I will most want to uh, discuss with you in the comments is, which hero should I summon? Because there are some op options. Like I was thinking about LFA and DTV, the big damage dealer guys, those are kind of missing on this account. And like, especially on DTV, we got some not that great stats. Um, LFA is decent, but like for the huge SE damage, I mean, you kind of want an S tier. Um, I really don't want to go for copies that don't inherently have a lot of value. Like, of course, maybe some of you guys would think it's cool if we summon SDE, but SDE in the auction house, well, doesn't even sell. So yeah, that's that's horrible, and that's not something that I want to do. So it has to be a big damage dealer, I would guess. TBB, I would kind of like, but also it would feel like a waste, in my opinion, because... Um, for the stages that we currently get stuck at in Void Campaign, she's just no solution at all. Um, if we are fighting this, uh, Valk will just kill us if we use TBB. So there she's just not present. And I just don't want a hero that will likely not be present. And Damage Dealer most of the time have a place somewhere in the meta. Uh, if it's against uh, to fight against some bosses or something like that, it's always like the place uh, where you uh, will again find them. Well, CC can roll out of meta. We saw that with Starwing Jara for a long time, where she was just not present at all. People used her as a tenant for Fairy Queen Bessa to get some more damage uh, in Star Expedition, but that even is no longer really the case, given that uh, Fairy Queen Bessa is now no longer in the meta. And I mean, we, we kind of bought an A plus some time ago, because I really wanted to use her. And actually, quite recently, I rolled away from Giant Killer Fire. Now, currently, the Fire Holy Armor and Holy Damage. And I would love to have like the Fire Holy Armor heal effect, but we'll see about that. Maybe in the future. Um, and one more option is, of course, a new hero. We have some new heroes. We have Gaggy, for example. Um, with his bomb ability, his Transcendence Hero might be interesting. Um, but I, I'm, I can't really go for a hero, obviously. Um, before seeing the Transcendence Hero would be kind of a waste. It's, it just has no value. Uh, the only value that uh, such an action would have is like if I had somebody that wanted to buy it in the auction house and I summoned it with the intent to sell it to somebody, which I, I really don't want to do, given that this poses such a risk that you low roll an attack and then the person suddenly says, nah, I really don't want it. And then you sit there with the Gegi and it turns out to be a bad hero. But it's like, it's a damage dealer. And another thing I'm, I'm thinking about is usually, I think during the last times we got uh, a dark hero around December. And um, that is the case again. I mean, we might see a strong hero. And if you look at the dark transcendence heroes, who do we have there? We have uh, LFA was the first one, huge damage dealer, absolutely insane. And then we got Star Swordsman Mockman. I mean, arguably the hero that made it possible for a lot of people to uh, go into Void Campaign and get a lot of progress there pretty early on, before other heroes like DTV emerged. And then we got PDE. Well, you wouldn't really want to summon an S tier hero of her, I guess. At least not on my account, wouldn't make too much sense. Um, but still, pretty good hero nonetheless. So the question is really, um, what's going to happen there? Because, like, I think Dark Heroes have a history of being pretty good. So I kind of feel like it would be a waste to not take a look at it. To not wait till um, 
we see what the hero is going to be. And I don't think we will get a good opportunity to go for an ST hero uh, in the near future again, because it just drains your copy, uh, the account of copies. Uh, well, that's certainly a thing. But um, I mean, other options would be like MFG, but like MFG, I don't know. It's, it's fun hero, most definitely. But uh, you have a hard time clearing most of the content like Void Bosses or Void Campaign with him. So focusing on him in that sense felt, feels a little bit wrong. But you can tell me your opinion um, on who we should summon in the comments. Uh, do you think we should wait for December? See if there is a new Dark Hero that can be insane? Do you think Gaggy will be insane or will it be one of the present heroes like DTV or LFA? Uh, let me know in the comments. Until then, I wish you guys a great day. We'll see us in the next one.